Hey you guys, today I want to try something that has never been done before. Now I looked for this all over the internet, I looked over YouTube and I haven't seen anyone try this. So I feel like it's my responsibility to try it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about mixing two different epoxy and of two different brands. And I'm going to tell you exactly why I want to do this experiment. But before I tell you that, let's talk about these two epoxies, why I chose these two and um, of course why I want to make this experiment. When you do stuff to sell as a business, you are looking for more affordable um, products so then your final product doesn't end up super expensive. So if I do a charcuterie board, I don't want to have to sell it for $300 because nobody's going to buy it. So instead I want to sell it for $125 to $200. Now because of that, I have to find ingredients that are not that expensive, but works really, really well and still give you a really good result with prof professional results. So I chose these two epoxies. I'm going to talk about each one individually and then I'm going to tell you the pros, the cons of each one of them and um, why we want to do this experiment. The first one I want to talk about it is this eye crystal epoxy. This one is the most affordable epoxy you can ever find is you can buy two and a half gallons for under $50. So the price is unbeatable. It is a good quality epoxy, but it does have some flaws. Um, Part of the flaws is, well, first of all, when you look at it, you can see the hardener is pretty amber looking. So that means if you're doing a really clear epoxy casting, this is probably not a good epoxy for you. Another thing that I don't like so much about this epoxy is the fact that the maximum pour for this one is one inch. Now, most of my pours are one and a quarter to one and a half inches. So I've done some experimenting and I was able to do one and a quarter pours with this and it acted just fine. It did get a little bit hotter than normal. The thicker you pour the epoxy, the more heat it produces, the faster it cures. And because of that, then I got a few more bubbles than I should have because the heat produced those bubbles and a little bit of foaming sometimes. And also because the epoxy cures so fast, um, the um, epoxy colors don't have time to really merge with each other and get that beautiful bloom. So you get more of that distinct dragon skin effect, if you will. And I'm not really into that. I like the bigger blooms. So the results of this epoxy, it's, you know, it's really good, but it's not my style. So very affordable, but not my style of results. This epoxy, like I said, it cures pretty fast. If I put it today, tomorrow, I can pretty much take it out of the mold. Now, eye crystal uh, brand, they do make a deep pour epoxy that it's two to four inches, I believe, or up to five inches. I'm not, I don't even remember, but that does not have this affordable price that becomes a lot more expensive. And um, I wanted to keep the price as low as I can. Now, on the other hand, the slow Q casting from Rusty Designs, this is a slow curing epoxy. This epoxy is pretty much almost perfect, but it also has a few flaws. One, it's more expensive, but still affordable. For um, less than $50, you can get two gallons, I believe. No, one gallon. So you get one gallon for $49, where the eye crystal, you get two and a half gallons for $49. So that's the price difference, but still cheaper than other brands out there. Now, because the slow curing, that means it takes a lot longer to set and harden. So if I put it today, tomorrow morning, it's still not necessarily jiggly, but it moves. It's not hardened yet. Because of that, when you put the colors in it for the bloom, it will get those big blooms, but it's a little bit maybe too slow. And because of that, all the colors kind of merge together. And instead of having really separate, distinct colors, or not really, just kind of separated, then you get this one more uniform color. So I want my result to be in between the faster one and between and the you know slow curing one. So if I can merge these two and make a perfect one, then that will be fantastic. Now the slow curing uh, epoxy, it is very clear. So if you want something really clear, this will be the one for you. 
Slow curing also is uh, designed to work in cooler temperatures, but I have tested in warmer temperatures and I had no problems. So it pretty much worked well for me all year around. Where this one, it's you know more temperamental when it comes to temperature in the room. But even when it heats up a little bit, if you put a fan, if you turn down the you know AC in the room and stuff, you will get really good results. So the reason why I want to make this experiment is because I want to keep the cost as low as possible with really good results. And most of all, for me, the most important part is I want those swirls uh, that it happens with the exothermic reaction. I want it to be somewhere in between, in between what each one of these will do individually. So it's around noon time over here. So I have all day, I'm not leaving anywhere today, so I'll be able to keep an eye on this epoxy just in case it has a bad reaction and it starts a fire or who knows what happens. So I'll be ready for it. So what I will do is I'll mix one brand of epoxy in one of these buckets, then I will mix the other brand in this other bucket, then I'll mix them all together, I'll use half a uh, measure of one, half the other, mix them all together and then I'll split it into a smaller containers and I'll put some pigment on it, we'll pour it and we'll see what kind of results we get. I hope this makes sense. All right, so here I am back. The piece of wood I will be uh, doing the charcuterie board with is this walnut piece. And you can see it has a lot of sapwood and there's the walnut in the back. It has a little bit of curl in there. And you know, this was a scrap piece of wood that, you know, if something bad happens, I'm not upset losing it. So this is what we will try with our experiment. Now I already mixed my colors and we're gonna go there in a second to do the pour. But because we're gonna do this in my mechanical room and it's very noisy there, I won't be talking while I do this, but I'll be taking you there. You will see me pour the epoxies. Those are equal amount of both brands that I mix together and I mix four colors. I have two dark greens, a, large, a light green and a metallic brown. So I'm going to pour this and then when I'm done pouring, I'm gonna set up my camera and do a time lapse and let you guys watch what happens. We'll see if uh, the house burns down or if we get some nice swirls. And um, I will let you be the judge if this is worth it and if it worked out. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll go over there, I'll do the pour and uh, we'll set up a time lapse. And this is what our pour is looking like. I have not done any swirling. This is all by the exothermic reaction and the epoxy. I really love those darker crater looking things. It just, I feel like it looks amazing. I'm super, super happy with the way it turned out. Now, a few hours later, the epoxy did change a little bit of an appearance. I took a photo of it to show you. It looks like this after a few hours. And then because I loved it so much, I ended up doing one more pour using the same mixture of half and half. And you will see it coming up right here. And this is the new one. I'm using some ancient red wood and that one looks fantastic as well. Now, I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.